Judging from previous Regulation E tournament results, the VGC community expected that Fire and Water Ogre Pond would make the biggest splash in Day 2 of the Toronto Regional Championships, but that couldn't have been further from the truth. This is how Ogre Pond Cornerstone Mask and Ogre Pond Teal Mask made top 8 at the Toronto Regional Championships. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time or learned anything new, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I post tons of competitive Pokemon content just like this and I'm on my way to 500,000 subscribers. Ogre Pond is a Pokemon that has multiple forms dependent on its held item. Ogre Pond Hearthflame gains partial fire typing and mold breaker, and then gains an attack boost upon terrestrializing, allowing for massive damage specifically when paired with the likes of Chen Pao or Rillaboom. Ogre Pond Wellspring is part water type and has water absorb, then gains a special defense boost when it terrestrializes. This one gained popularity as a support Pokemon with massive burst damage next to the likes of setup Pokemon like Golden Go or King Gambit. These two dominated the metagame, knocking even Amoongus down a peg or two due to its unfavorable matchup into them. But Toronto flipped the script. Not only did Amoongus surpass both Ogre Pond forms in Day 2 usage, but the the only two Ogre Pond forms to make top 8 at the event were the Teal Mask form and the Cornerstone Mask form. This is strange due to them being widely considered to be kind of weak and hard to fit onto teams, yet they still made a splash at the event. Starting with the Ogre Pond Cornerstone Mask, this variant found its way onto Andrew Krug's soft Trick Room team next to Dusclops, Ursuluna Blood Moon, Landorus, Chi Yu, and Iron Hands. Ogre Pond Cornerstone has some great traits that were widely unexplored up until now, namely its phenomenal ability in Sturdy which allows for Ogre Pond to have a built-in focus Sash, living at 1 HP as long as it's attacked from full health. With this, it's able to almost always guarantee saw damage into anything as long as it's not doubled into by the opponent. Its main draw though is its rock type Ivy Cudgel. Normally, physical rock type moves have shaky accuracy with middling power. Rock Slide, for example, has 90 accuracy despite only being 75 base power, and Stone Edge, which has better base power at 100, is only 80 accuracy, being super unreliable. Ogre Pond Cornerstone effectively has an upgraded version of Stone Edge at its disposal, with it having all the positive aspects of the move, the high damage and high crit rate, with no downsides, as the move does not make any contact, avoiding rocky helmet damage, and has perfect accuracy. Beyond this, on Trick Room teams like Andrews, it's able to support partner Pokemon like Ursaluna and Iron Hands by protecting them from opposing Amoongus' spores. This is because Ogre Pond Cornerstone is naturally immune to powder moves due to its partial grass typing, and has access to Follow Me, which allows for it to redirect the moves into itself, which don't affect it at all. Andrew made Cornerstone Ogre Pond look absolutely great in his run, and has officially put Trick Room Rock Ogre Pond on many places players' radars. On the other side of things, we really need to talk about the Teal Mask Ogre Pond. This variant is widely considered to be one of the weaker ones due to it not having the built-in 20% damage boost that all three masks provide Ogre Pond with, due to the Teal Mask not being a held item. In exchange for this, Ogre Pond Teal Mask has the best ability of the three in Defiant, and can hold a held item. Defiant allows for Ogre Pond to gain plus two attack every time it has a stat lowered by the opponent. This means that it intimidates from the likes of Landorus or Arcanine granted a free plus one net attack boost. When it terrestrializes, it, just like the other forms, loses its ability and gains a boost to a stat. In the Teal Mask's case, this stat is its speed stat. Needless to say, a plus one Terra Grass boosted Ivy Cudgel will pretty much one shot anything. But Jamie Boyt, who took it to top four, had a genius idea. Not only would Jamie Boyt run the Teal Mask variant to deter intimidators, but he'd make sure that this Ogre Pond could threaten a KO on basically anything. You see, Jamie gave his Ogre Pond a Razor Claw. This item gives all moves an increased critical hit chance. The way the Pokemon accounts for increased crit chances works out so that if a Pokemon uses a move with a high crit rate that's boosted one stage further by the Razor Claw or Scope Lens, it will crit 50% of the time, bypassing all defense boosts and screens set up by the opponent. When you combo this crit damage with a speed boost and the damage boost from Terra, this Ogre Pond set can quickly get out of control for the opponent. Jamie ran it next to Booster Energy Roaring Moon, Hisui and Arcanine, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Golden Go, and strangely enough, a Thunderous Therian. By having three of the most threatening physical attackers on a team next to an Ogre Pond, which can make the opponent quickly regret bringing any intimidators to the match, Jamie's team had a lot of offensive pressure right out of the gate. For an example of just how powerful this Ogre Pond can be, here's a real damage calc. Heatran has to almost always Terra Fairy in front of an Ogre Pond to prevent getting O-Code by stomping Tantrum, but at that point, Ogre Pond can actually threaten to deal up to 101% with max attack Terra Grass Ivy Cudgel crits. And while Jamie ran Sword Dance on his Ogre Pond for the extra damage, forcing the opponent to protect to scout out what option you go for with your Ogre Pond means that running a move like Encore to lock Pokemon down into that Protect or a setup move can actually be a devastating adaptation to this strategy. It's really interesting seeing the two lesser used forms of this strong Pokemon get used at such a high level of competitive play, and I'm really hoping to see how the metagame adapts down the road. I've definitely got my eye on all four forms of Ogre Pond now due to these results, but I really want to know what you guys think. Which Ogre Pond form do you think is the strongest in the current metagame, and do you think Amoongus is going to beat the mid allegations? It already had more usage in Day 2 than Ogre Pond, but was this just a fluke? Let me know in the comment section down below 
and be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. Thanks to all my YouTube channel members and Patreon supporters, and a special thank you to my three most boosted supporters, Kanor, Joseph B, and Narwiz for their generous pledges. It's support from people like you that keep this channel going, so if you want to support my channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page in the description or click the join button down below the video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.